Pamela, I can't hear you. I had my audio muted. That's why. There you, you go. Muted. Okay. I have the volume um, set on this. Hold on. All the devices. Um, so can you close the Hangout on the other computer? I know it's the evil trackpad of doom. Uh, no, because this is the one that's controlling the Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean that computer with the evil trackpad that wasn't working? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I realized we were screen sharing while you were showing the stuffed animals, so they didn't really get a chance to see that, so. That's oh, okay. okay. That's all good. Um, so, yeah, if you could kill the other uh, thing of Moon Mapper so that the... There, perfect. Okay. Okay. So we can hear you down here clearly. Uh, can you hear us OK? I can hear you. Awesome. So I'm going to go around, and um, I'm going to make it so that we can vaguely see you. Yes. This is the other set. Welcome to set B. Yep, we're good. OK. I am here with the Jungle Fire, and I'm going to have you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Dan. I'm the guitar player and uh, backup singer sometimes. I'm Kristen. I'm usually the flute player, but I'm just singing back up today. I'm Nicole, and I uh, work with the Jungle Fire. You're the manager. Manager, <laughs> sling and merch, all that. I'm here to, here to sing today, too. So. I did not know about the, I'm not looking at the camera. The camera's right there. I'm looking at the microphone, which isn't useful. <laughs> um, so I, I met these guys last weekend. They reached out to me on Twitter and um, said, hey, we're doing a, a gig in Edwardsville, which is where I live. And they're a secular soul band. And I just <laughs> loved that concept. And I love soul music in general. And um, I'm going to ask you guys to explain what it is you do, but I'm going to fuss with the camera so we're not looking up our nostrils. So okay. Okay. if you can talk while I fuss with the camera. Okay, well, basically the idea for the Jungle Fire was um, how to create uh, a type of music that is um, focuses on social justice and and people and honesty and truth uh, without using religion as a background or or any any of that very a very science based um, approach to taking care of each other and taking care of the world and all of the elements that inhabit our little ecosystem and I guess that and then this is kind of what we came up with and so you take inspiration from science, and you were telling mm -hmm. me a little bit last week about who your personal inspiration is. Well, definitely Carl Sagan is one of my favorite people that ever existed, and Cosmos was kind of a cry to the world to not blow itself up, yes. and also to teach science. Uh, and at a very young age, I saw it and thought, wow, what a wonderful concept that we can all live together in peace, and it doesn't have to be through any religious manifestation, it can be just realize, you know, he showed us pictures of the world and was like, this is the beautiful place that you live, and there's only one, so let's take care of it, and let's take care of each other and everything that goes on. And, and this, this is such a great concept that science really brings us all together. We come from different cultures, different uh, international heritages, we share uh, different religions and non-religions and different spiritualities and non-spiritualities, but no matter what our belief system or non-belief system may be, there's science. And astronauts often talk about the overview effect, which is when you get above the Earth's atmosphere, you realize it's all one world. And they sometimes realize they just want to get home so they can well, talk to people about this just one world that we share. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you guys to start singing. Okay. Um, <laughs> since we don't have our full band, we're just, we can't really do our songs, so we're just going to do um, some different songs that um, give us hope, from, from artists that give us hope, and that's kind of the concept of the Jungle Fire, too, is science and music have been things that have given us and the world hope. And I'm gonna, my yeah. 
Phil, I tweeted you this. He's looking later, I'm sure. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> Debbie's shirt says, Sagan, Tyson, Plate, and Einstein. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of awesome. And I tweeted before I made it, I made this um, shirt, and when I cut the stencil out, I tweeted a picture of it to Phil Plate, and he was like, no, 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 you need to put me on the bottom below Einstein. It's <laughs> like, no, just I think aesthetically it looks bigger. Yeah. It looks better like this. <laughs> and this is just my mail. There's going to be a female one. That will be around soon. Carolyn Porco and all the really, really cool ladies, Sally Ryan and all my my favorites. Uh, she was somebody that I loved a lot too when I was growing up. So uh, this first song is uh, "Across the River" by Lucero. Um, I think I'm just going to do this one by myself, unless you guys. Are. And then uh, we're going to do like Bruce Springsteen and The Cure and all these wonderful bands that we grew awesome. up with that, that made us happy. So this is "Across the River." Um, and feel free to tweet me about my mistakes or any uh, um, <laughs> any uh, any chord misses or anything like that. Cats and jorts. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Cross the river, you dance all night. Pretty little girl that left behind. You no, know you're not waiting on me. You no, know you're not waiting on me. Look at you, girl, with skin and bone. Breaking all the hearts of the boys back home. You no, know you're not waiting on me. You no, know you're not waiting on me. Alright. Hey, all right. Drove across the river, made me sleep in the van. You were making time with the boys in the van. No, let us say it's all right. No, let us say it's all right. Look at you, girl, you're all grown up. Say it don't matter, ain't talk so tough. You know I say it's alright. You know that I say it's alright. Ain't alright. Ain't alright. Trouble with the market talk, pull the most metal heart of the fall. When I get better, don't work this out. 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 Alright. Hey, alright. <laughs> song by the Sarah. There's a country band, but like all kinds of stuff. You know, music, you can make it your own. That's one of the awesome mm -hmm. things about it. And so you, you mentioned that you're not here with your, your entire band, who had the, the awesome chance to see last week. You, everyone in your band, I think, sings. You have a lead singer with an amazing tambourine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. James, Mr. James Field is he's a pretty special guy. Yeah. yeah, and he can just belt them out. Mm -hmm. how, how did you all come together? Well, I actually had the idea for the band about two years before it started. I'm like a crazy, crazy Bruce Springsteen person. So I was like, well, I need an industry band. Um, so I just kind of... You know, being, I've been a musician in St. Louis for a very long time and kind of had my eye on a few players. And then when I talked to them about it, there was some like, yeah, all right, maybe. And then I cut a demo with like two other guys and then gave it to them. I was like, this is kind of what we're going for. So um, I'd asked Adam, our organ player, who lives about two blocks from here. He's at his daughter's ballerina uh, recital today. <laughs> I had worked with James, and we had talked about um, hip hop and uh, like old, like 80s hip hop and uh, blues music and soul and like how we weren't religious people but how gospel was great. So that's how we got him. And then I wanted a flute in the band and I was walking through our grocery store at Local Harvest uh, Grocery and I was like, yeah, I got almost the whole band together. I just need a flute player. And she was stocking the shelves and was like, 
I'm a classically trained flute player. He's like, well, now you're going to be. In the well, band. I said I play flute. And I'm like, <laughs> Why did I say that out loud? Because I'm one of the trying people. So I really usually would never do something like this. But she told so. So I played flute when I was a little kid. In fact, I think yes. Yes, she has a beautiful. I, I have the, the flute case in the back here, and then Fife that likes to roll away. <laughs> um, and and. It was awesome because she was hitting that low C note that's hard to get on the flute <laughs> and then going all the way up and just when none of the, it, the, the staggering doesn't have the best acoustics. And when all the rest of the note, notes were kind of muddy, that flute just kept carrying the melody through. And that was just really awesome as a former flautist and a former oboist. Neither <laughs> instruments are normally associated with rock and roll. That's true. Yeah. So I felt really privileged to be a member of the band. <laughs> and our our bass player and I had been in a band, uh, a hardcore band together for like five years, and we were just kind of moving away from that. And then our drummer Matt, uh, I've known for twenty years, and even our when we were growing up, our little punk bands and our different little indie rock bands at practice, we'd always try to like like try to like play blues or funk and. After about 10 years, it was like, oh, we can kind of do this. Now I'll just wait till we're at least 30 to start the band. <laughs> yeah. you got to be grown folks yeah. to, to like, pull it off well. Yeah. So that was just kind of, kind of how it came together. And then it was just like one of those things in the universe after a couple practices was like, whoa, this is actually pretty cool. And Nicole's just the most awesome person here. Yeah. And, and so, Nicole, I, I think your job is to tell our folks out there listening where can people go to get the awesome soul secular music that this group puts out that brings science to the soul? The, the <laughs> easiest place is probably to go to the Bandcamp page where you can download everything they've ever done. Um, and that would be thejunglefire.bandcamp.com. Um, and then you can just look up the band uh, on Facebook or Twitter or any of the various social networking sites. Mm -hmm. and be kept up on what's going on. So cool YouTube video too. Way cool YouTube video. <laughs> Look up the Jungle Fire St. Louis Walk. Mm -hmm. You'll be mm -hmm. able to dance. So let's hear another song from y'all. Okay. Uh, what would you like to do? Springsteen. Springsteen? Okay. This is for all our friends that are standing in front of uh, Wembley Stadium right now. We're probably like six hours waiting to see. The greatest rock and roll performer who's ever been. <laughs> Mr. Bruce Springsteen. Uh, I'm going to try not to butcher this. So, uh, this is Spirit of the Night. Bruce Springsteen. Crazy Jane and a machine man were back in the alley and trading hands. Rocky Wild Old Billy with his red jean band Tuned it up on Saturday night Billy slammed on his close to the brakes And said, hey, one more while to this late So about a mile down the dark side of Route 88 I got a final road, so let's try We'll pick up Hazy Daddy and Killer Joe And I'll take you all out to where the gypsy ain't broke That was right Together we move like spirits of the night All night, all night, all night Don't you know what they do to you, them spirits of the night All night, all night, all night Stand up and let it shoot right through you Well, while it really was a crazy cat He shook some dust out of his crew skin cap He said, trust some of this and we'll show you where you at Please stay to help you hear the feeling the time we made it up to the greasy lake I had to head out the window, James, make us in the cake I think I really tell her I was too much to fit I said, I heard her say, let me hear you And we danced all night to the soul fairy band She kissed me to fight like only oh, lonely as you can Felt just right Together we move like spirits of the night All night, all night, all night, all night. Jamie don't know what she do to you in the night. All night, all night, all night. All night. Stand up and let it shoot right through you. 
Will the night prove bright and the stars to light on? Oh, really, baby, dancing in the moon, I get down in the water and the stone was light. So she'll go and pass out along. Being crazy, they were a little in the third. <laughs> One more time, let's do that one more time. Let's do that ready. We'll do the D. That's the science part with like the moon and the stars, so it always uh, throws me out there. Then I haze it, Terry. Really hurting me. Rain's like just socks and a shirt. Being crazy, Jamie making love in the dirt. Singing a birthday song. Jamie said it was time to go. So we close our eyes and say goodbye to Gypsy and the Rope. Felt just right. Together we move like spirits of the night. All night. All night. All night. All night. Stand up and let it shoot right through you. The spirits of the night. All night. All night. All night. All night. Stand up and let it shoot right through you. The spirits of the night. I'm kind of butchered it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just learned it the other day. This is why, so <laughs> yeah. it, it's all good. So uh, you can feel free to laugh at this. We have from our uh, audience a request for the Galaxy song for Monty Python. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't even begin you know to it? remember all of that. No. Oh, I teach a course I wish on that song. I should, yeah. I'll do that again soon. I, yeah, that's not a live singing because there's way too many numbers in it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, well, we were thinking like, I mean, obviously we just uh, talked to you like oh, six days ago yeah. about doing this, so we tried to throw something together. And I was even thinking of like trying to do some of the Bill Nye songs that we play. You know, they would do the cover songs about science at the end of the show. But we didn't have enough time. We promise everybody out there in space that the next time that we do this, that will be all all space. I tried to pick things like that song, where it's like the night grew bright and the stars through light. Maybe they were main main sequence stars. You know? <laughs> the moon the moon shined on Billy and Davy. It was like, well, is it apogee or is it perigee? Was it somewhere in between? So sort of science stuff in there. <laughs> so so one thing I I'm. Was standing over behind the camera, watch, standing over behind the camera uh, while I was watching them play. Because I'm realizing if I keep looking at the microphone instead of the camera, they're going to do the same <laughs> thing. Uh, so I was standing over there while they were playing, and I was noticing you have planets on your leg. I do, and I know you have fabulous tattoos. And I'm, I'm going to ask. Carl Sagan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the Voyager one on the inside. So, so this is clearly, once you start putting ink on your body with science, you are committed. <laughs> yeah, in it for the long haul. <laughs> so so how, how long have you been truly passionate about, about science? Uh, since I was, can remember, I mean... My first book that I would carry around all the time was a yeah. big hardback called Our Solar System. Oh, and it cool. just had... Uh, artist renditions of what creatures on other planets would look like if we ever found them based on the atmosphere of that planet. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. That's my favorite book. When I was a really little kid, my grandfather was big into reading, and my aunt, who was a veterinarian, she's an experimental pathologist now, um, they got me a subscription to National Geographic. So I would always have like their fold out maps for stars and all the beautiful things that they would have had in my room, you know? So. And, and what I love about this is, is I am forever hearing people say things like, oh, I'm a musician. I don't need to know that science stuff. But here you are. It's the most important thing to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About the world that you live in and the universe that surrounds it. Yeah. And, and so this is an inspiration. And I'm going to step out of the camera and let you play another song. OK. Um, let's do the cure. Okay. This is for all of our friends who were hanging out in the 80s. And The Cure was also a band that I thought was from outer space when I was like, <laughs> the sounds they were making, I was like, this is so cool. Uh, you may know the words of this. If you do, feel free to sing along, okay? okay? She said, the one that makes me laugh, she said, the 
I, I hope so. I, I really think so. I, I think as younger people um, detach themselves from religion and or maybe like fundamentalist type of religion that there's a lot of a lot of interest in like a lot of my friends with tattoos and who play music are also very interested in, in certain aspects of science. Uh, and what I think will change the whole thing is the Jizza from Wu Tang Clan, who are like the coolest people that have ever lived, is doing the Rap Genius Project with Christopher Emden, who's uh, a professor at Columbia University, um, who's using rap to teach kids about science. So they have to write a few bars of rap, and he'll give them words to use uh, or things to use like DNA, but they have to explain how the things work in the rap. So. It's not just saying like, oh, mononucleosis and rhyming that. You have to explain how it works or explain how photosynthesis is, um, you know, a plant capturing light energy, turning that into energy. An animal eats that energy, turns it into energy. You eat that, you know, you have yeah. to really know how to do it. I would hope that that is something, and I think it will emerge over like the next 20 years that, that bands, there's, there's still some religious ex aspect of like wonderful like gospel music. It's, it's the word awe in the awesome part. Mm -hmm. it, it's it it comes in and and we're not taking a religious standpoint here. Just to be clear, I I am a Christian. I support secular music because it's a great way to unite everyone. Um, it doesn't matter what you believe. Science is still there. Um, but but this teaching science with music when we were at Science Online, there's this fabulous rapper whose name completely escapes me, and I'm hoping that Nicole can pipe up with the name. We can't hear you, Nicole, but she's probably down helping all the Twitterverse right now as I step off camera to look at the screen. 
Um, and and he, he was out there basically uh, getting out the word that we're all one people. He did this whole series of raps on, on evolution, and it was just really, really cool because um, we, we all, all are, genetically speaking, out of Africa. And so to see this white... Baba Brinkman. Uh, what was it, Nicole? Baba Brinkman. Baba <laughs> Sorry, Brinkman. I was, I was oh, doing yeah. other things. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Baba Brinkman, he, he did this whole series of fabulous music teaching evolution and how we're all out of Africa, no matter how pale a white person we are. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, yeah, this is a great mm -hmm. way to get the science and the concepts out there. I think that uh, probably for somebody like Dan, as much as anything, it's about reframing the context. So even if the lyrics for us don't necessarily um, do what that does, which is like explain point by yeah. point a piece of science, it's about reframing the conversation from necessarily like this is a magical thing that somebody else created to this is our world and we all have to take care of it. And so that's where the secular end comes in for us. I think. That's that's cool. You you, you look like you something. <laughs> oh well, I don't, but I can. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure what these folks are, but um, like what the jizz is doing, I would hope that kids being brought up, not just listening to mindless things um, or things that don't take any effort, um, that that maybe will breed a new generation of. When the kids memorize those raps, his new. Jizz has a new record coming out. I don't know why I'm stumbling for him. Sorry, but, uh, <laughs> uh, he's got a new record coming out called Dark Matter, and every lyric, every word was written and fact checked with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. That, that's so awesome. And then, obviously, everybody out there knows who Dr. T is. There's going to be no mistakes. Everything's going to be perfect. I'm sure, even if the album cover art has stars on it and you held it up, it would be perfect. You know, he's a matter of fact guy. That. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Love, and love Dr. T. Yeah, it's so. This is I know I can only spell Mississippi because of the Bugs Bunny cart, the Warner Brothers cartoon M I S S I S S I P P I. It's the only reason I can spell Mississippi. <laughs> well, if we can get kids, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And let's hear another song. Okay. okay. Um, what else we got here? Oh, you know what? Let's use the let's do the organ. Thing. And we'll do another, uh, we're going to do another Bruce Springsteen song um, called Hungry Heart, which people, again, if you were an 80s person, you didn't know this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me think how to do it here. Okay. Can you explain what you're about to play? Because I've never seen one of those before. Um, I had not uh, either. When I bought it, I just got it at like a resale shop, mm -hmm. and it's basically just like an, it has its own air pump in it. It's a Magnus organ that has like chords and I just thought it was really neat and was like, oh, I'll be able to use this for something sometime. It works look Here we are. Yeah, it's yeah, but. You don't have to pump. Yeah, yeah. Into it. yes. It's the lazy man's accordion. That's probably, <laughs> no, that's probably how they build it back in the day. There's a guy from Athens, Georgia, who uses this as a primary instrument for the really good dude, so okay. they're around. <laughs> they're not popular, but they're around. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so we'll do uh, Hungry Heart. Got a wife and kids in Baltimore, Jack. Went out for a ride and I never went back. Like a river that don't know where it's fun. Took a wrong turn and I just kept going. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Lay down your money and you play your part. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Whoa. Met her in a Kingstown barn. Fell in love, I knew it had to 
Yeah. It took what we had and we ripped it apart. Here I am down in Case Town again. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Take down your money and you play your part. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Whoa. Everybody needs a place to rest. Everybody needs to have a home. Make no difference when nobody says. Don't nobody like to be alone. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Put down your money and you play your part. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Whoa. Yeah, I just stayed on the key chords today. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's, it's all good. Um, making sure I actually walk all the way to the camera. So, so I haven't been doing that the time. entire time. <laughs> so, um, you guys write a lot of your own lyrics when you're being the jungle fire. Right. Uh, how do you sit down and come up with the ideas for the lyrics you're doing? Can you share any of your, your lyrics out with, with our audience? Yeah, um, usually I'm in the shower and um, <laughs> like a lot of people, and I'll just have like a rhythm in my head, like uh, like St. Louis Walk is like the only lyric to the song is "Oh, you already know it's that St. Louis Walk," and it's kind of just about how we do things in St. Louis. It gets a bad rap for crime and this and that, but we have beautiful artists, wonderful musicians, amazing, amazing restaurants. Uh, and just a wonderful community, uh, which I think is sometimes overshadowed by uh, the violence. Um, so that was kind of just like a song to like let people know, like, hey, what we do here, we, you know, we're working class, but we're working on a bigger, a bigger thing. So that was literally like I was in the shower, like, oh, you always know it. Okay, cool. That's a song. <laughs> That's a song. Um, we just put a new. Uh, We just put a new single out, a three-song single called Brothers and Sisters. A three-song single. Yeah. It's right. like a 32-hour, 24-hour hangout. Right. <laughs> Semantics. Yeah, whatever. It's like you get extra bang for your buck. Right? <laughs> uh, so obviously, uh, we gave you one the other yeah. night, and it's called Brothers and Sisters, which is a very, like, gospel-y, religious sentiment, but it's also very true. You know, everyone on earth, it, we're all part of the same ecosystem. Um, there's a song uh, called Things Gonna Change that's kind of about that I wrote for myself and James, we both kind of came up the same way. Pretty, really good song. Pretty poor, like, you know, less than lower class people who were just determined to let other people in that situation know that, like, you, you can change your own, you can, you can change your own world. You just got to go out there and yeah. do it, and we're determined to do it. And there's a there's a line in it that's like. Uh, that's like, I looked to the set. We, we had good friends, love, and imagination. I had a crazy man. And I'd look to the sky at night and dream of what could be. And that's just an illusion of me being on the roof with the telescope um, and thinking about it. And the, like, I think what really I loved about science when I was a kid or what got me into it is I could kind of grasp the concept of big and small and, like, really the concept of big and small. And I used to think about, uh, I went to Catholic school for first and second grade. And in second grade, I was drawing this picture of, I wanted to build a machine that could go to the edge of the universe and then park the machine and then get out and step to the other side. So I used to have thoughts like that, which always interested me in science. Um, but lyrically, uh, like even the song Brothers and Sisters, which is kind of like a, yeah, it's protest music and it's kind of an indictment of our current government. Um, we spend money on horrendous things like war, and they just steal money from us a lot instead of putting it into science and research that could help the entire world. You could have clean water for everyone in the world if we invested in science and technology. Uh, plenty of food for everyone, plenty of medicine that wasn't bad medicine. You know? So that that's kind of what encompasses um, 
that single, and then uh, the other song on it, the, the love song James wrote, and it's sort of a story about how he loves his wife, and he sees these things going on around, and how times are tough, but how we can, how we can build ourselves up, and you know, his mom was, was and is a preacher, but he is not a religious person, uh, even though he took some sentiment from the church, he's a very peaceful and loving guy and wants to help the world. So that sentiment is there, and I guess that's kind of a really long version of how, <laughs> uh, how that, that goes down. Yeah, but you should go check this music out. It, this is coming from the heart of part of the country that a lot of people don't know about. We live in what's called the flyover zone because the folks going from the East Coast to the West Coast are going from Texas to Chicago. They fly over. They don't stop. But in the St. Louis area, we have this amazing diversity of farms, towns of 600. I have students that think Edwardsville, with its 25,000, is a big city. I'm from Boston. This is a small town. <laughs> um, we have East St. Louis, which is the most impoverished and most uh, racially segregated city in America. We have St. Louis, which is this city of diversity where we have the young hip hipsters, we actually have hipsters now, um, community. We have the universities with Wash U, Washington University, um, St. Louis University, University of Missouri, St. Louis. Uh, so we have all of these universities, but then we also have all of the poverty in the city. And it's all mixing together. And on one hand, it, there's a depression to walking down the street and seeing these amazingly wealthy people with their fancy cars next to people who are walking home to their apartment where a whole family shares a single room. We're all mixed together. We all live together. But we are find, finding ways to inspire one another to raise up and make the city and the community better. And St. Louis is going through amazing transformation as they work to make the city one that inspires everyone with the statues, the music, the art festivals, but everything else is yeah. going on. It was a great city once, and it, it still is, but it can be that international city again. You have the best music on earth. <laughs> and, and this is one of the hearts of blues music, yeah. and uh, so that, that's what's so awesome about finding you guys in a city that has been such a heart of doing music for all these years. And um, it's a With the science museums, uh, UMSL has some of the top researchers, uh, sorry, Wash U, Washington University, has some of the top researchers in the world for physics. Alyssa Brown. Barnes Jewish <laughs> Hospital. I, yeah, so this is a great diverse place. And uh, I think we have time for one more song. One more? Okay. Do um, you want to do the, um, let's, let's not do that song, it's so tough. Uh, do you want to do the uh, How Can Four Man Stand? Or should we do like a gospel, like, I'm going to lay down my burden? Well, it's up to you. That's completely unrehearsed, so. We can keep your eyes on the prize, too. We got that one, so. Okay. Um, uh, how about we do the, okay, this is um, a song that was written by Blind Willie Allen way back in the day, way, way, way back in the day, and then um, reimagined by Ry Cooter in the 70s, and then on the uh, We Shall Overcome Springsteen sessions. It was again reimagined by Mr. Bruce Springsteen. It's called uh, How Can a Poor Man Stand the Times and Live? <laughs> <laughs> it goes along with just what you were just saying. Well, the doctor come round here with his face all bright. And it says in a little while, I'm going to be all right. All he gives is a humbug pill. Does a dope and a great big bill. Tell me, how can a poor man stand the time to live? He said, me and my old school pals have some times around here. And what happened to you poor black folks? Well, it just ain't fair. So he looked around me with a little pep talk. He said, I'm with you, then he took a little walk. Tell me, how can a poor man stand some time to live? Well, there's bodies up and down, and the levees gone to hell. Martha, bring me my 16 gauge and some 
on dry shelves. Those who got got out of town, those who ain't got left to drown. Tell me, how can a poor man stand the times and live? I got family scared for Texas, all I'm waiting for some more. And I ain't got no home in this world no more. Gonna be a judgment that's a fact, a righteous train rolling down these tracks. Tell me, how can a poor man stand the times and live? How can a poor man stand the times and live? <laughs> Thank you. That, that was absolutely awesome. Thank you. And and I, I love the, the line in, in that song, family from Texas to Baltimore, because that's my family. <laughs> and um, it's, I hate saying this, but science, when you accept a life as a scientist, you're signing on to that poor man's life. Uh, Britton Schmidt, who's a researcher down at the University of Texas, I heard her talking to Emily Lackawalla about this on a podcast a while back. Here we are, we have PhDs, advanced degrees, we've spent 10 years or more in college, and our starting salary is $30,000 a year as faculty. Um, Same. I think a lot of artists share that, and yeah. that's why there's a growing community between science and art, is that it, it is when you accept something that the other people don't consider practical, then you're consigning yourself to doing what you love, but not what can sustain you necessarily. And, and this is where here at Cosmic Quest, we all do this because we love it. Um, Corey and Joe, amazing programmers, could be earning huge salaries, but they're building science tools. Uh, Nicole and I, Nicole can engineer, she can do TV and radio, she could be somewhere else. I program, I do voice work, we could all be doing other things with our lives, but we're living that poor man's life, trying to make it go, trying to make it go of science, and trying to make this work for you. And we're hoping you'll reach out and help and donate to keep our programs going. You can keep my whole team employed for $200,000 for six months. And uh, one, cheap. yeah, so $1, $100, and if you have no money to share, we get that. Share a link, get other people in here, get them doing the science on CosmoQuest, get them sharing the science through all of our hangouts, through our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash astrospherevids. We're here to bring you the science, and thank you for bringing science to the people okay. in their own way. The link one more time. Uh, Thejunglefire.bandcamp.com will get you the music, um, or you can check out Twitter or Facebook, The Jungle Fire. Thank you so much for having us. This is the greatest thing I've ever been a part of my life, because my worlds have just collided. So this has been my pleasure. I, I am a total music junkie. I can't play it the way my husband can, but that may be part of the way he found me. <laughs> I probably can't do it. So, <laughs> so I'm going to shut off this hangout and send it back up to Nicole in the attic. Nicole, can you verify you're there because I can't see? I'm here. Yay! Oh. Okay. I've so been sitting here dancing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I will be back up in a moment. Um, type me if you need anything from the first floor. I will sign off now. Bye. Thank you so much. So that was The Jungle Fire. Uh, look for them on Bandcamp. Uh, I don't know. I, I missed it. I don't know if they're actually selling that t-shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a really cool T-shirt, and and I know Phil Plate has been in the comment thread, uh, just squeeing with delight at uh, the good company he's keeping there. Um,